The Navy is so confident in their aircraft carriers, they actually try to intentionally blow them up. And if you thought this was like shooting a couple of fireworks at the ship, you would be sorely mistaken. As the bulk of the crew hunkers down, they watch helplessly as a series of explosions get closer and closer, until a warship drops off a bomb less than half a mile away. This begs the question, isn't the US fighting enough battles? Why would they be trying to fight against themselves? Whenever the US Navy purchases a new class of ship, it is understandable to want to see what it can do first. After all, not doing so is kind of like buying a car without taking it for a test drive. Except in the US Navy, instead of a test drive, it's more like a crash test. And instead of using dummies, they use real people and more than 100,000 pounds of explosives. Known as the Field Service Shock Trials, or FSSTs, these tests are meant to determine the survivability of a ship in simulated combat situations. While the Navy does not do these tests for every ship it receives, it does do them for the newest ship in each class. Because of this, the last time the Navy did these tests was in 2021, before officially accepting the first Ford-class carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, into service. And if you think that exploding huge bombs next to ships is dangerous, you aren't the only one. After more than a year of planning to pick the perfect time, place, and manner for the test, the Ford finally sailed from her home port in Norfolk, Virginia to the northeastern Florida coast for the test of her lifetime. After getting into position, the crew set general quarters, or as Hollywood likes to call it, battle stations. Each crew member goes to their assigned station, with many repair lockers to respond to damage quickly. Certain crew members close specific fittings, hatches, shuttles, and valves to make the Ford as watertight as possible. Once completed, it's now a waiting game for what comes next. Outside the Ford, a U.S. warship tows a sled carrying a 40,000-pound bomb to test how well the Ford's hull, critical engineering and combat systems, and navigation suite can survive battle damage. The Navy will explode a bomb at different intervals from the ship, with a final one being less than half a mile from the vessel. For context, the resulting explosions were measured as a 3.9 magnitude earthquake, so yeah, pretty powerful. Despite the three bombs going off near the Ford, the ship survived literally unscathed, much to the crew's delight. However, this shock trial isn't the only thing shocking about the combat power of modern U.S. aircraft carriers. One of the things that makes aircraft carriers like the Ford or a similar Nimitz-class carrier stand out is how incredibly fast they are. Powered by massive nuclear reactors inside the ship, the steam produced by these reactors powers massive steam turbines that help turn four shafts. Attached to the end of these shafts are propellers that are more than 25 feet in diameter. This equates to roughly 260,000 horsepower, roughly the same amount of horsepower as a combination of 360 Hellcats coming at you all at once. With such a powerful output, carriers like the Ford can travel in excess of 30 knots. This is because their top speeds are classified but with the nearly unlimited energy output from its reactors, they can probably reach Spaceballs' levels of ludicrous speed when in a pinch. But carriers aren't using this speed to get away from a fight. They also use it to help generate wind over the decks on calm days and get to the battle space quickly. Once there, a modern U.S. aircraft carrier can stay there for an impressive amount of time. With over 5,000 sailors on board, with roughly 3,000 ships company and 2,000 for the carrier air wing, U.S. aircraft carriers are like mini cities with everything on board. On top of creating over 400,000 gallons of fresh water each day through its reverse osmosis units, the ship's galleys churn out more than 15,000 meals each day to support 24-7 flight and combat operations. In addition, Ships like the Ford can carry several months' worth of provisions at a time, including food, fuel, parts, and other stores. U.S. aircraft carriers can stay on station for months without any support thanks to their nuclear reactors. But that isn't even the most impressive part. 
with many aircraft carriers sporting fully stocked 7-Elevens, movie theaters, gyms, and even a literal Starbucks on board, U.S. sailors can slay terrorists while enjoying their pumpkin spice latte anywhere in the world. And we do mean anywhere. This is because aircraft carriers like the Ford can withstand some pretty heavy seas. Though exact endurance limits for wind, wave height, and sea state are classified, we know from public reporting that the modern carrier can handle some pretty heavy weather. For example, during efforts to assist Guam in the aftermath of Typhoon Mawar in 2023, the USS Theodore Roosevelt reportedly experienced up to 30-foot seas. For most other warships, wave heights of 30 feet mean they're not coming back home. However, ships like the Roosevelt and the Ford can easily withstand weather conditions that force most others to turn away. This helps American aircraft carriers retain dominance, since each one has a literal country's worth of whoop-ass stored on board. In total, Ships like the Gerald R. Ford can carry up to 90 fixed and rotary wing combat aircraft, including F-18s and F-35 fighters. Globally, about half the air forces of the world have fewer than 90 aircraft, which makes each carrier air wing stronger than 50% of the world's air forces. But those numbers are even crazier when talking about how often they can carry out missions. Whenever an aircraft takes off for a mission, it's called a sortie. A typical carrier can do about 160 sorties a day for normal, everyday operations. However, during sustained combat operations, the carrier's crew can pick up this tempo and increase it to 270 sorties a day, which equates to an aircraft taking off or landing every two and a half minutes. This level of combat power is simply unmatched by any other country in the world. And what is even crazier is that these ships are quite literally unsinkable. In 2005, the U.S. Navy decided to carry out a test to make the Ford-class carriers unsinkable. To test out their theory, they picked a decommissioned aircraft carrier, the USS America, that was older than currently serving Nimitz-class carriers, but still had a lot of similar features. Over the course of four weeks, the Navy fired every weapon it had at the America, from torpedoes to guided bombs and anti-ship missiles and five-inch shells. The Navy literally couldn't sink the carrier, and that wasn't even trying to defend or repair itself. After four weeks of bombardment, a Navy EOD team had to literally board the ship and conduct a controlled demolition to sink her. And keep in mind that all of this is for a ship that is older and less survivable than the Ford or her Nimitz-class cousins. But despite how impressive these stats already are, the Navy still is not done making its aircraft carriers even deadlier. Although besides the advanced features like EMALs and advanced arresting gears the media likes to harp about, the Navy has been integrating a couple technologies they have been pretty quiet about. One of these is a laser weapon designed to change the face of warfare. Called the High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, or Helios, this directed energy weapon is sorely needed in contested waters. Utilizing the ship's own power, this laser can use its energy to destroy small drones and aircraft and even fool incoming missiles. Additionally, the laser can be used to dazzle civilian shipping in high-density traffic lanes and serve as a means of long-range precision surveillance. First unveiled in 2024, the U.S. Navy has installed the first operational system on the USS Preble for use in the South China Sea. Pending the results of her initial trial run, the Navy will extend the laser's use on carriers. With the essentially unlimited power generation from nuclear reactors, Carriers like the Ford make sense to have directed energy weapons to protect against a whole assortment of threats. But that is not the only change the Navy has in store for carriers. Known as the Hypersonic Air-Launched Offensive Anti-Surface, or HALO, this missile will turn carriers from hunted into hunters during modern sea combat. Carried by the ship's air-wing onboard aircraft like the F-18 Hornet, 
The Halo is a revolutionary weapon that can destroy ships from hundreds of miles away when combining the missile and the aircraft's range together. With this capability, carriers can now have the ability to destroy enemy fleets long before they're even seen. And though this weapon is still in development, there is another upgrade that is being field tested and, once operational, will truly change the trajectory of naval warfare forever. Currently, aircraft have to land back on deck to refuel most of the time. While the Navy has a limited capacity to aerial refuel its fighters without returning to the carrier, this is not a common practice, but recent technology could change all this. Known as the MQ-25 Stingray, this drone is the first AI-controlled drone to aerially refuel combat aircraft in the world. Already well into its testing phases, the Navy has begun operational trials to incorporate the Stingray into its carrier air wings. With the ability to keep jets on station longer or extend their range, the Stingray, once operational, will be the most significant change to naval warfare since the U.S. created the Aegis Combat Suite in the 1980s. However, the Stingray is not the only drone the Navy is testing. With surveillance drones like the Sea Guardian, which can also carry out anti-submarine warfare, the Navy is looking to greatly increase the use of artificial intelligence across every spectrum of naval combat. With the huge flight decks and massive amount of space inside, aircraft carriers like the Ford are perfectly poised to incorporate these technologies to make the already competitive edge the U.S. maintains over the rest of the world that much bigger. Bye for now.